Good morning, students. So today uh, we will uh, be talking about uh, biotechnology part two, which has to be called as uh, applications. As we already completed the bi biotechnology part one, in the part two, we basically study different types of biotechnology in that uh, different types of biotechnology, the specially we have to concentrate on agriculture biotechnology that can also be called as a plant biotechnology. And then uh, uh, we will be concentrating on animal biotechnology. So in that uh, we will be talking about transgenic animals, whereas in the plant biotechnology, we have to call it a transgenic plants. Okay, so moreover to the plant and as well as animal biotechnology. So we will be understanding medicinal biotechnology. So in related to the diagnostics part of it. So we will be understanding the diagnostics importance of in biotechnology in the field of medicine. So priorities only these three kind of things. So as we understood what is a vector, what is a host, what are the different methods we have to follow, whether can we inject the uh, desired gene directly, that is called as a direct method, or indirectly, that has to be called as a vector method. Now, and then uh, we also talked about the fermenter, why to use a fermenter, uh, uh, okay? So hence uh, all this kind of information already we know it just we need to know which are all different uh, research has been made in the field different fields that has to be concentrated now yeah okay fine straight away we'll go to understand the more and more applications towards the biotechnology part two okay now so in this regard has a uh, uh, this is uh, we already discussed that agriculture biotechnology, uh, healthcare biotechnology, and also we have uh, the uh, industrial biotechnology, which is there, but that is the major applications we can see, but still, you know, uh, plant animal biotechnology is included here. Okay. Now coming directly, coming to the directly agriculture biotechnology. In the agriculture biotechnology, the first point that we need to understand here, what we are understanding is in our country, in our country, the food production should be increased. There should be high yield of food production because India is a, such a huge country that the population is a huge and everybody should be fulfilled, fulfilled with the food. So for that particular high yield food production for the purpose of it, you know, we have to grow lots of things. So for that, what are the different methods that we follow in the field of agriculture? It's very important. The first thing they followed is, so let me explain the first one that is called agrochemical based agriculture they used. What is agrochemical based? So we need to use some certain chemicals here. Uh, why we have to use the chemicals in the field of agriculture? In that view, so what is the what is the thing is now the crop has been grown and it has to give the fruitfulness or the yield. So for that certain disturbances are there. So the disturbances like a pests, some insects are there, some bacteria, fungus, and some pathogens. So these are all will gonna destroy the our crops. Uh, it will not allow us to give a very good yield. So for that kind of purpose, you know, agrochemical based agriculture has been proposed. Now this, in this, uh, what is, what we have to, we are using the chemicals in this case. Yes. So by using the chemicals, like for example, the pesticides we are using, insecticides that we are using, bactericides to kill the bacteria, fungicides to kill the fungus. Okay. And certain fertilizers that we use also, which is a chemical based. Now these fertilizers, uh, what has been used, all these kind of uh, the chemicals which has been used, definitely it has got a side effects for the 
soil side effect for the land side effect for the plants now in this regard the first point is it is very expensive it's very expensive the chemical fertilizers what we use and the drawback is the infertility of the soil so we will be losing its fertileness every year day day after every rotation of the on uh, the crop okay so if it is infertile the soil has become then totally the land has to be called as a barren land it is a desired land so in the future we think we cannot go grow any kind of a pro crop in that particular land so hence to be noted this uh, that fertilizers how to uh, solve this kind of a problems then later we also introduced a uh, another method to improvise the agriculture for the improvising the high yield so in that case number 2 what has happened is organic farming the organic farming uh, so when we say organic farming here uh, instead of using the pesticides insecticides which are called as a chemicals we have to use now which is eco friendly eco friendly that is bio pesticides let me use let we use a bio insecticides and instead of going for the chemical fertilizers we will go for we why can't we go for bio fertilizers the naturally made fertilizers the cow dung mixed fertilizers okay and sort of uh, fertilizing with the help of earthworm that is what called as a vermiculture but all these kind of whatever the pesticide insects insecticides that we want to to extract you know so but these are very 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 much time consuming to get the product okay and what happens to these you know uh, the pesticides and insecticides and fertilizers whatever we are using for the organic farming purpose the consumption the consumption of the of these kind of bio pesticide by insecticides it is heavy 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 consumption what what i can call it up as so the organic farming what happens consumption of these materials is very high even the water what it has to consume the plant it also is taking very large amount of water here okay hence uh, there that again comes up with the uh, drawbacks only one is very very slow extracting getting the things is very very slow even though we get the things you know the we need to put a high heavy load of it it will take heavy load of this okay and water consumption is also very very high so this kind of uh, the drawbacks that we followed yeah okay then later another method the method that we wanted to based on our field that is by technology in the biotechnology what we have we have to introduce that is called as genetically modified organisms what is that genetically modified organisms gmo we call it term now based on this genetic why can't we introduce the genetic engineering concept to all these particular methods so then the, then we if we followed with this uh, genetically modified methods uh, uh, as per the genetic engineering methods we follow it or we call it a recombinant dna technological method so and uh, then uh, let me also uh, introduce and find uh, uh, and then we'll find out what is exactly will going to happen okay so before we go with this genetically engineering concepts of methods in the field of agriculture uh, now the personality his name is called Norman E. Borlaug. So please make a note of that. Norman E. Borlaug is a person who is considered to be father of green revolution. Father of green revolution. So that was an idea from his. So to develop, uh, introduce the genetic engineering concept. So next, go to the green revolution. The father of uh, father of green revolution is Norman Borlaug. and father of green revolution in india in india that is ms swaminathan ms swaminathan so this is in india you have to we will specify like this so that we can able to deal the things okay now 
genetically modified organisms they we classify genetically modified organisms into two categories one is called gene addition and the one is gene subtraction so gene addition in the sense we are just adding the genes we are just adding the genes subtraction in the sense subtraction in the sense inactivate the inactivation of the genes okay so inactivation of the genes like already some particular genes will be there so it will going to give rise to the specific proteins so if it is we inactivated the genes then the specific proteins will not be given so like this is that's a way uh, we are doing it the sub gene subtraction what we call it up gene addition in the sense you have to add a desired interest gene so that we can able to it has to be benefited here next g what is a gmo advantages so advantages uh, we can able to uh, go for such the, such kind of a varieties of plants the varieties of plants like uh, now these are all transgenic plants you can call it up as a cold resistance plants so all these are all plants cold resistant so that means uh, the plant is uh, never uh, it will be hurt by the cold never it will die with the cold because it shows a resistivity drought resistance means less water will be taken by the plant salt salt tolerant heat tolerant pest tolerant okay so post harvest losses so the, all these kind of things we can able to concentrate and finally we can able to get those kind of uh, the varieties of plants okay and the gmo also concentrates on the increased efficiencies and also vitamin a concept also with they are interested in okay so in that case the first in the in the in the concept of gene addition now we are taking one of the topic which is called as a golden rice technology the golden rice technology that was introduced for the first time by ingo potricus and the peter boyer okay so these are the two scientists who introduced this what is exactly their principle is we have to take uh we have to take a gene from the so and so source source the gene which is uh, exactly here with it, what they what they are explaining is beta carotene is a principal source of vitamin a so what we have to do we have to extract beta carotene gene from the daffodils plants daffodils which is yellowish in color the plants the scientific name of daffodil is narcissus pseudo narcissus so from this what we have extracted is a beta carotene gene now after that the gene is uh, introduced into the vector the vector is a ti plasmid so already we know it ti means tumor inducing this is a plasmid which is obtained from the bacteria the bacteria name is called agrobacterium tumefaciens okay from this bacteria we have uh, uh, we have extracted the ti plasmid to that we have to introduce this beta carotene gene so once it is introduced the beta carotene gene finally it has to be introduced uh, into the host the host here that we have selected is the rice rice scientific name is called oryza sativum so why we have selected the rice as a source or uh, rice as a host here because the rice is the staple food in asian countries okay so hence the, we we have selected the rice so then what has happened is so the beta carotene gene will uh, multiply over there and it will show the kind of a product over there finally uh, it will become a precursors and then uh, vitamin a will be synthesized now this is uh, because of uh, the beta carotene gene which has been introduced uh, the into the rice the whatever the core of the rice the core of the rice when the paddy so it will turn up into yellowish color so that is why they named it as a golden rice now because of the the, the you know like a vitamin a it has to be taken to the body why vitamin a especially because the deficiency vitamin a results into night blindness night blindness or we call it up zero ophthalmia so where there will be dryness of the cornea will go knock up the next technology we went it is called as a hirudin technology hirudin what is hirudin hirudin is a protein that where which uh, which is can act as a anticoagulant anticoagulant 
Okay, so this is the one which can able to check the blood clots. So such a uh, importance we have got from the herudin. Now herudin, where do we kind the? We'll get the herudin then. So herudin is obtained from the leech actually. It's, so every time we have to go for to the forest and to catch out with this leech, and then we have to extract the protein, the herudin from this. It's a again a process is a. a complicated process is a slow process of a uh, uh, lot of procedures has to be done so instead of for that particular thing now the technology which we want we have used is okay take leech and then uh, extract the gene the gene name is called herudin gene look at that herudin gene is extracted introduced into the ti plasmid which is agrobacterium tumefaciens bacteria then after that we have to introduce into the host that host that we have to select uh, we have selected is brassica napus the brassica napus is uh, the scientific name of a mustard family uh, okay so acres of herudin can be obtained high yield of acres of herudin can be obtained within 4 uh, to 5 months of it so in a one uh, the large acres of the herudin also we can go for high production we can go for so that is a kind of a concept what, what which was fulfilled by the technology which is herudin technology was been introduced now coming to the next uh, that is called as bio bio insecticides bio insecticides so what is this bio insecticide that has been popularly one of the technology one of the procedures that we do uh, it is called as a bt cotton bt cotton the first we will understand what is exactly bt means bt means bacillus thuringiensis the bacillus thuringiensis which is a rod shaped bacteria now this bacillus thuringiensis will going to produce a protein which is a crystalloid in structure and it is a inactivated inactive toxin so that inactive toxin has been called as a endotoxin endo toxin let me also repeat once again the bacillus thuringiensis which will going to produce which will going to produce in a crystalloid protein which is an inactive toxin can, can be called as endotoxin endotoxin now this endotoxin why because when once it is get into the insect body then it becomes active till that time it will be inactive so why that activeness has been brought because of the alkaline conditions in the gut the our mid gut or oh, sorry the insect mid gut okay the alkaline condition the ph makes that particular inactive toxin into toxin and finally what happens it damages the surface epithelium a surface epithelium and then uh, the what happens is this active toxin get into the gut pores are created so finally there will be swelling in the mid gut so that the insect cannot able to eat any more the finally the insect will die this is how the toxin effect will be there in the insect body and we will also understand we should also understand here different types of vitamin uh, sorry bt 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 cotton bt corn bt rice bt tomato bt potato and bt soya bean etc the bt toxin when we talk about it we have uh, uh, there are uh, certain genes the gene name is called cry gene has been written c r y if you write you know then it is uh, gene if you write the capital letter c r y then it is a protein or a toxin so in that gene you know two different varieties of the genes has been no has been um, extracted has been noticed cry cry 1 ac look at that 1 ac and 2 ab 1 ac and 2 ab these are the genes which can able to kill cotton ball worms cotton ball worms the cry 1b 1 ab can kill corn borer so this kind of question will be asked you know please make a note of that this put a question mark that this is the one which is which will be asked in the neat examination now let's understand what are the different kinds of you know the family or the order of the insects where uh, which can be killed 
Now, when it comes to lepidopteras, lepidoptera is an order from these, you know, tobacco budworm, army budworm, corn borer, cotton palmons, all comes under this. Okay, coleoptera, which is uh, beetles, we can see the beetles, diptera, flies, and mosquitoes come under this order. Now, this cry gene, let's understand the process. Cry gene should be introduced into the vector and it becomes a recombinant vector, and then host should be that is selected, should be the that is a cotton plant. Now, this is the procedure that we need to follow. Now, okay, when we when we talk about uh, the the procedures, the genes, all those kind of things, procedure already we know it. So, where the, the cry gene, uh, um, the cry gene has to be introduced in the vector that is TI plasmid, the recombinant uh, agrobacterium to fishes. Up to that, it has to be introduced into the cotton plant. Now, that cotton plant should be called as a BT cotton. So now the insect which comes and bit the leaves of the BT uh, cotton plant, then the juice what have been taken by the insect, the juice will have the BT that is Bacillus thuringiensis rotchip bacteria. And finally, now that uh, will get into, then will be converted into exotoxin or active toxin finally. So there will be death of the insect like this. We can able to control the insects which has been called it as termed it as bio insecticides now moving to the next part of it which is called as a gene subtraction that means we have to inactivate the gene in this case that we are understanding the uh, one of the tomato this tomato is called flower sour tomato this particular flower sour tomato was introduced by the the company the company name is called cal gene technologies cal gene technologies now, how is exactly this procedure is? So basically, we need to understand that uh, there is an enzyme. The enzyme name is called polygalactouronase. This is a one which promotes softening. Softening, meaning over ripening of the tomatoes will be done by this particular enzyme. Over ripening of the tomatoes will be done by polygalactouronase. Now, what we have to do is this Poly, because this enzyme will be produced by the polygalactouronase gene. Yes. Now that gene has to be inactivated so that there is no formation of polygalactouronase so that there will be no over ripening. If it is no over ripening, in that case, we can, we can keep the tomatoes for more and more days. Even more than a month, we can able to keep the tomatoes without any refrigeration. So that is a concept here. That's a concept of this uh, calgene technologies. Now, in this in this uh, able to uh, understand that again, what is the kind of a vector which will be used? We, a vector will be used is called agrobacterium tumefaciens, which is uh, the bacteria from their TI plasmid is extracted. Now, what is the which is a which is a famous kind of a bacteria in the case of agriculture biotechnology? Your answer should be agrobacterium. If the famous kind of a bacteria in the case of industrial biotechnology, then your answer should be E. coli. Okay, so in the case of animal biotechnology, what is the kind of a vector which will be used? Your answer should be retrovirus. Oh, fine. Now, next is next we go to the another the gene subtraction method, but that's called as RNA interference. I stands for interference. And this was introduced by the person, his name is Andrew Fire, and he got Nobel Prize for this particular concept. The RNA interference is also can be called as a knockout technology. In activation of the gene, we can call it an anti-sense technology. What is anti-sense technology? It means uh, basically mRNA will gonna give rise to protein synthesis, that is transcription to translation process. Now, what we have to do is we have to block this mRNA so that the protein should not be produced. So that is what we call it anti-sense technology. Okay, and uh, basically this, uh, they did the experiment on the tobacco plant where the tobacco yield has gone down. So how to improvise its uh, tobacco uh, yield? So for that kind of things, uh, why that kind of yield has gone down? Because of the nematodes. The nematodes, the nematode team is of the pest, which is called as Melidogna incognita. So please make a note of that. That's a pest which was growing on the roots. So then we have to avoid those kind of uh, the pest. That is what we call it a biopesticide. Is the topic here? 
so rna interference will work out on the bio pesticides this technology can also be this is the root knot because of that root knots by the melidogna incognita this particular uh, the research or the the scientific array happened now what we have to do we have to silencing the gene silencing the method is the what is called as the the, the word which has been int introduced here if you silence the gene there is no there is no mrna there is no uh, protein synthesis so finally there is no translation but the thing is this rnf interference will going to work this technology will going to work only in the eukaryotes not in the prokaryotes now what is the how we can able to silence the gene it is due to the like uh, we have to make it that origin uh, mrna to that we need to put some complementary rna if the if the original rna suppose origin rna to that you know the complementary the the complementary rna is introduced like this the binding has been taken place so by this you know the mrna will not gonna produce the protein it becomes silent now how that has to be done this has to be done by introducing double stranded rna double stranded rna so now for example the, now how do we get this double stranded rna that is the point here the point that the we can get this double stranded rna by the help of transposons we can go you can get transposons and then uh, we have to introduce nematode gene only nematode genes nematode that is already we are discussing those kind of those kind of uh, uh, the melidogna incognita which is a pest you know from that we have to take a gene and this gene and the transposon gene both has to be introduced that is that will become a double stranded rna so hence uh we can we can we can introduce that now how this has to be introduced into the into malignant the same thing procedure is same nematode genes has to be taken ti plasmid and then introduced into the host host is a what is who is a host that is that means a tobacco plant right now like this you know the one of the one of the rna for another rna is from the transposon so that double stranded rna it forms so finally it forms you know the it will become a complementary and then there is will be silencing okay fine not only the silencing here the one of the major technology one of the major application but there is also which will also results in cellular defense in the future also they won't get any kind of a disease yes now you can see the diagram in the diagram in the tobacco plant is seen and also some root hair has been seen over there root knot has been formed because of the growth of the melidogna incognita which is a pest you know so there will be you know what forms is like uh, like these uh, nodules will form a form like these nodules will going to form because of the pest why the nodule is growing over there because because there is it is getting some protein over there as a food so on the roots you know that is the it the the melidogna incognita has been infested so infested that uh, uh so because of the nodule or the node is growing over there the root has got a, uh, the stamina of the root has been decreased the weakness of the root so that it cannot able to absorb the enough amount of water and also the minerals so because of this has happened so finally what we have to do is if you do the silencing of the gene then automatically the protein will not be formed the hence you know there won't be infestation of this particular pest that is wow wow we have to avoid this okay now that is a silencing kind of a method that we need to understand here so that is called as rna interference rna interference so here uh, like already i said about the viruses from the viruses uh, sorry transposons we can get able to get the rna and we can also introduce the viruses to get the rna okay now that rna will be made into cut and small uh, interference rna like that we can do it and finally it has to be introduced okay introduced to the original mrna concept like this it has to be introduced yeah then only the silencing can occur so that's about the rna interference technology that's about agriculture biotechnology where exactly you have few applications to be discussed as per your syllabus concern now we are moving to 
biotechnology applications in the field of medicine in the field of medicine um now here the, there is some data um, saying that there are uh, 30 recombinant pharmaceuticals al already discovered okay so discovered but only 12 are in the market 12 are in the market 30 has been already discovered the 12 are in the market the 12 uh, the names also we'll just have a look of it uh the first one that we understand human insulin that is can be called as humulin streptokinase the clot buster we call it erythropoietin which is a hormone which for the rbc production purpose a hepatitis b vaccine hepatitis b vaccine gh means growth hormone human interleukins okay and then uh, granulocyte stimulating factor macrophage interferon all these for the cancerous related things factor 8 for the clotting and then fsh follicle stimulating hormone interferon gamma is also for anti cancerous so these are all there in the market now the first we will understand humulin humulin means human insulin that is why the name given as or genetically engineered insulin you can call it up okay uh, basically once there is a the the disorder has which has been happened that is called as a diabetes mellitus okay so the pancreas has got a two different cells alpha and beta cells in that case in the beta cell has to produce insulin for that insulin only then so it will not allow enough amount of the blood sugar to be collected in the blood so that immediately it will take going to take because of the insulin that's a procedure which is there in the body uh, but what is uh, so for that you know now the patients so many patients are becoming the diabetes mellitus patients for that we need to give insulin now because there is a deficiency of insulin because beta cells are not working properly in that you know the case the first in the incident what has happened is the scientist name is called banting and best banting and best now what they did they slaughtered the pigs and dogs from there you know the pancreas they taken uh, from the pancreas you know they extract the insulin ju juice and that insulin was given to the patients who those who were suffering from diabetes mellitus and what has happened what is the, what was the result was the patients got allergy due to this so then they stopped this particular slaughtering the pigs and dogs and collecting the insulin from it uh, the next next they they introduce uh, 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 the scientist whose name is uh, uh, the eli lilly the technologies 1983 Eli Lilly, 1983, USA. So that they introduced that uh, there's a technique of production by using by the method of genetic engineering. In that case, you know, the, we have to understand the prior, you know, the background studies should be done. One is called pro-insulin. What is pro-insulin? Pro-insulin will have three different chains. A, B, C. We call it up. Okay, A, B, C. The pro, the pro-insulin will have uh, matured insulin. from pro insulin only the matured insulin will going to form the matured insulin will have only a and b chains so what should be removed from that if the c chain will be removed then only we can going to get the matured matured insulin okay for this you know the concept of that the vector that what we are using is pbr322 the recombinant vector and this you know the whatever the, the insulin that is the produce production it is uh, from the chromosome number 11 from there the the gene which is present look at that now what is that happened you know the concept here to understand is the pro insulin pro insulin to the matured insulin we have to remove the remove the c chain the removing the c chain is a very very expensive procedure in the as per the industrial industrialization or as per the business when we talk about it as per the profit when we talk about it, it was very expensive procedure so the hence you know uh, there was a one of the method they followed this is called itakura ital method itakura ital method what is exactly they say is separately you grow a protein a chain uh separately you grow b chain then after that you join a chain and the b chain with the disulfide linkage so that is what they are 
telling this is a kind of a, a the concept now what they say a gene you take a gene you take okay see this is called as a human humulin means human insulin has been formed that means we have to take you know the extracts from the a gene from the diabetics pay, pay, uh, from the human beings only from the human beings and the normal human beings from a a gene is taken and then introduced into the pbr322 and it forms a recombinant vector and after that it has to introduce in the host and then put in the fermenter we finally we get a chain now the similarly you put in a b chain b gene also same procedure you follow and finally we get to b chain so a chain and the b chain should be interacted with the with the disulfide linkage and then only it is forming what is called as a matured insulin okay disulfide linkages will form matured insulin has been formed now by this particular procedure you know that is used to be you know not uh, labor cost was not there very much profit was that so that this is the the method was it was introduced by the elilili 1983 so then so diabetes uh, the production has been started and then getting profit now that's how the insulin has been produced so next concept that we need to understand is gene therapy so gene therapy therapy means a treatment like what so so uh, in the genes itself there are some dysfunction in genes will be there that dysfunctional gene should be corrected by the method called gene therapy the corrected gene other which is called as a normal gene right so that is where the gene therapy in the gene therapy we have two different types of gene therapy one is called as somatic gene therapy another one is called germ line gene therapy germ line is the one which can able to give the permanent cure the somatic means only on the somatic cells body cells we can able to do the experiment but germ line means it has to be done during the embryonic stages so on the based on these you know the there was a, a one of the uh, particular case has been introduced in the as per the ncrt book that case is the nine in the year 1990 the four year old girl okay four year old girl was suffered with a disease what is called as a skid yes cid that is severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome okay severe combined immunodeficiency now that uh, why is that so this is a kind of a disease so because of the deficiency of the enzyme that enzyme name is called adenosine deaminase adenosine okay deaminase that is the expansion of because of is a deficiency of enzyme there is what is called as a disease called as scid scid is severe combined immunodeficiency what is immunodeficiency here there is no maturation or maturation and differentiation of the lymphocytes maturation and so that is not has been happening correct so because of this enzyme deficiency in that you know the we we have to understand that this has to be done correction should be done by different methods the first method uh, we can do is bone transplantation bone marrow transplantation bone marrow transplantation is a very expensive procedure and uh, donors all those kind of things that we need to think but still you know if you do it also there is no permanent cure so this procedure was dropped then there's a next procedure the 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 doctors thought that is enzyme replacement therapy therapy that means uh, we need to give the enzyme which is called as ada enzyme intravenous injection should be given okay so the enzyme has to be this enzyme used to that enzyme will gonna mature the b lymphocytes or lymphocytes so again you know the more no every uh, then and there uh, the intravenous ada should be given it's again a um every day procedure and this also will not gonna give rise to permanent cure it is instantaneous uh, kind of a procedure and expensive procedure 
so that was also the concept was much not recommended then when they went to the the next uh, that is called as a uh, genetic engineering concept in that case gene therapy that is what we call it a uh, somatic gene therapy what is it meaning uh, the functional ada is introduced into the lymphocytes oh okay fine how is that from the bone marrow take out the lymphocytes bring it into the lab to the uh, no yeah, to this to this particular lymphocytes you add the ada and then again uh, uh, no uh, give it back to the bone marrow so what the bone marrow now is this maturation of the lymphocytes will occur the functional ada is introduced like this way so this procedure is also then and there it has to be done the procedure again um, seems to be very expensive and again no permanent cure so the baby the girl uh, was uh, was followed with the som that is a somatic gene, gene therapy and uh, that was introduced to that girl the next coming to the molecular diagnosis diagnosis in the field of diagnosis there will be two uh, different kind of uh, diagnosis that we have one is a traditional and the one is a modern one right traditional is uh, the still now also we follow it that is a kind of a samples that we collected the blood sample urine sample stool sample so here here we give a qualitative analysis but the quantitative is very poor uh, can be understand from the traditional biotechnology traditional molecular um, diagnosis uh, what are the different methods we follow for modern diagnosis that is elisa elisa expansion is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay okay pcr technology that is polymerase chain reaction that is that is a process that we are following it auto radiography these are all things that we do it uh, in the molecular diagnosis when we say elisa elisa we have a direct method indirect method so many kind of things here in the elisa we use different different enzymes for that alkaline phosphatase urease okay amylase the, like this this why we are using that enzymes because it will you know, give the colors so the colors why this colors you know we can able to say positive or negative so that is a concept it has been used here and the elisa is actually it is an antigen antibody reaction test so in the in the indirect method you know we can able to calculate the antibodies the quantity of the antibodies whereas in the direct method we can also calculate the quantity of the antigen and that's a procedure of it okay so elisa reader should be taken and finally so each and every well you know what is the amount we can able to calculate it so in the elisa reader there will be 96 wells will be there so that we have to read it properly uh already we discussed with the pcr technology in the priorly uh, in the first chapter we also should uh, additionally you should know southern blot northern blot and western blot southern blot is the one which can able to detect uh, the the quantity of the dna northern blot will go, go for the detection of rna western blotting can be able to say protein so protein can be detected here and the confirmatory test for the aids is the western blot technique so that already in hiv aids chapter we have noticed and here is uh, monoclonal antibodies oh, what is monoclonal antibodies these are called as a magic bullets this was introduced by the koller and meisterton these are the scientists who introduced this monoclonal antibody okay so that we have understood in a, a health and disease chapter the very very specific kind of antibodies can be produced by the technology which is called as hybridoma technology where myeloma is crossed with the b lymphocytes myeloma which is a cancerous cells which is called the normal cells by this hybridoma technology we can able to obtain the monoclonal antibodies which is very very specific kind of antibodies are produced auto radiography is a one uh, which can able to detect the mutation is there or not so what we have to do is uh, we have to take a probe a probe means that this probe could be single stranded rna or single stranded dna so should be taken and finally uh, the probe which has to be introduced now the this uh, single stranded rna the dna what is what we are taking which has to be a uh, radiated should be given radioisotope should be given the radioisotope that what we are giving is a phosphorus uh, 
32. Bosporus 32 is given, and uh, so that once there is elimination, we can able to find out that whether really there will be complementary or not. So look at that. If there is no complementary, then there is no mutation. There is no the inside whatever the cell is not been mutated. The gene is not been muta mutated. If it is a complementary, then we have to say it is a mutated. So abnormal uh, genetic disorders they can be find out by this particular thing. That means when there is a complementary. Okay, so the probe is introduced, it becomes complementary, so that the by the p32 eliminated, so that we can able to find out exactly the complementary things. Now that so that we can be able to say the cell is a mutated, the gene is a mutated one. Now that is all. That's all about you know the the medical uh, biotechnology in the field of uh, genetics, uh, in the field of uh, the diagnostics. Okay, so we will continue the in the coming session with the animal biotechnology and other uh, related uh, things which we have to understand in the field of uh, the biotechnology.